and ready to hear what's new. Well, I'm excited to present what's new. Slides, please. There we go. Because a lot of the pieces are falling into place on what's going to build our future and allow us to do more, have more applications, be more powerful, more efficient. And I'm really pleased to be up before you to help paint the picture of what this puzzle is looking like and what pieces are now dropping into place. But be forewarned, this is a fast-paced presentation. I've done it several years. I originally used the metaphor as it, of it's like drinking from a fire hose, just information flying at you from this stage. Last year, I used the metaphor of let's get rid of the regulator of the hose. You're drinking right from the fire hydrant. This year, you're going to be trying to drink from a wall of water, floodwaters raging towards you, which makes my job extremely difficult. I'm going to cover this floodwater of technology and additive manufacturing, cover hardware, software, and materials. 3D scanning, I'm going to limit it to just hardware. In this fast-paced presentation, all I will be able to do is give you just a little taste of each one. Carefully hand-selected and then highlights to give you just enough information to figure out if you need to go off and investigate even more. Now, what compounds this rapid, fast-paced presentation is not only that I only have a half an hour, but it's that the technologies are coming at us, the new products, new announcements, like an avalanche. So I've frozen that flood and turned it into an avalanche. In preparing for this presentation, I knew I couldn't do 12 months. Too much new has happened. So I started in August, and I made a short list of candidates that I thought you might be interested in. The short list from August 2016 to January 1st looks like this. Carefully selected tip of the iceberg, not everything that's out there. That's from August to January 1st. And then we look at January 1st to March. Here's the list of candidates I came up with. It's another exhaustive list. Now keep in mind, these aren't all products that you can purchase today. Some is early research, some is late stage research, some is alpha, some is beta, some is launch, all different phases but everything related to the mechanical engineer, design engineer, manufacturing personality. No construction, no dentistry, no bio in here. That's the list I came up with. That's what I had to choose from. Now to make things, oh, I didn't click the button. There's the list up through May. Didn't realize it didn't kick off. Another long, long list. Now kill that list. To make things a little bit easier to expedite the conversation, I'm gonna rely on the ASTM classification system. For those of you that aren't aware of, uh, what each one of these are, and thank you, Jason, for from Hybrid Manufacturing Technologies for the artwork created for last year. First one on the left is binder jetting, better powder material, jetting like an inkjet process, a binding agent. The next one is directed energy deposition. So think in terms of an energy source focused and then depositing material into that focal point of energy. The next one is material extrusion, extruding a material in a continuous bead or thread most commonly thermoplastic, but not always. Next up is material jetting. So instead of jetting a binding agent, we're jetting the material that goes into the part or tool that you're making. Then we have powder bed fusion, a bed of powder that material is melted or sintered with an energy source, such as a laser. Then we have sheet lamination, sheets of material bonded together. And finally, vat photopolymerization, which is a category that all the processes use, photopolymers, which are initiated with light, to cure. The last category is hybrid. That means it combines one of the seven ASTM categories with a subtractive process in the same machine. What I'm going to do is in the presentation at the bottom, where appropriate, I will have the little icons and the abbreviations so you know what technology I'm talking about so I don't have to stop in each and every one and describe what they're trying to do. So let's get started. And I'm going to start slow and easy. I'm going to start with apologies to the names on this list. The mundane. The mundane because even small changes can have a big impact on our lives. Small changes can affect our efficiency, our processes, and our applications. And we'll start with a rheometer from Freeman Technology. By the way, this is rapid, the place to see the technologies. If they are here, and most of these companies are, you will see a booth number next to their name. So if you find it interesting, write that booth number down and trot on down and investigate over the next two and a half days. Freeman Tech, the FT4 rheometer, this is for powder testing, testing uh, the flowability and the processability of powder. So that's early stage for R&D, material development, or process optimization. Elcan has a sifting unit, a sieving unit called the high sifter. High energy so that you can deal with difficult, to, uh, difficult materials with regards to flow. Sieving out down to 10 micron or less. And this is all about for the 
Now, metals world, powder metal world of additive manufacturing, getting those fines out because we need a real consistent particle distribution to get good builds. RUAC, I hope I pronounced that correctly, has the NS35. This is a dust collection system with an immersion separator and a built-in vacuum. This is about getting that dust out, knowing that the materials are often very reactive, very dangerous, prone to explosion, and so forth. So it's a safe dust collection system. Then we kick into the back ends of the process. Post-process technology, manufacturers support removal, surface finishing tools in an automated fashion. So once the parts are done, drop them in and walk away. Their most recent announcement is shown here. It's the Desi Rectangular, largest machine that they have for surface finishing. And then just this morning, you'll be seeing it for the first time here at Rapid. Form Labs announced the Form Cure and the Form Wash. These are automated tools on the back end of their VAT photopolymerization process. By the way, that's the first icon that's showing up. You can see next to the name, so that keys to the VP or VAT photopolymerization. So form wash and form cure are all about dialing in those processes to the specific materials you're running in form labs to get the best processes or best capabilities, best mechanical properties, best part properties out of the process and zero touch as much as possible. Now let's shift gears. That's what I call the mundane. You will hear about many new processes throughout the presentation. Most of them I've grouped in gangs by trends or by technology class. One stands out, it doesn't have a good fit in my presentation, so I'm gonna call them out all alone. Just this morning, a press release went out for a new company has been named called Paxis. Paxis has a new technology called Wave, Wave Applied uh, Voxel, Wave Applied Voxel. I have seen this technology, I'm impressed by this technology, I cannot describe this technology because it's early stages. You can see it and discuss it at the CIDS booth. I will tell you that it was born out of necessity in working with stereolithography machines in a service bureau environment. What is really interesting is it is inherently scalable and it's inherently has con configurable and it's great for making fast small parts. It's great for making many, many, many fast small parts. It's great for making big parts and it's great for making many big parts all fast through the configuration, configurable method of the technology. So if I've piqued your interest, stop by their booth. It's the CIDS booth to discuss Paxis. But now let's go into some categories. DLP, digital light processing. Been around for 15 years, and the first company on the list, Envision Tech, is the one that brought it to additive manufacturing. Their most recent announcement is a new light engine for the DLP source. It's LED, so they're adding this to their Perfactory line. They call it P4. And they're coming out with a P4 standard and P4 mini using this new light engine, which is all about lowering operating cost and improving speed and improving detail by having higher energy, whiter whites, crisper blacks, higher contrast. Oops, forgot to click the button on that. Then we have Admatech. Their goal is to drive down the cost of using DLP to make ceramic parts and metal parts. They're laying down a thin film of photopolymer loaded with either ceramic or metal powder. The machines run about $90,000. Two different machines, Admaflex 130, and then they add Metalflex. Uh, announced late last year. The metal was last announced a couple of months ago. So it's a lower cost. When the parts come out, they are green parts in the terminology of the powdered metallurgy world that have to be debound and then put in a furnace to center, to densify, to get the final me mechanical properties that you want and the final part. And I forgot to click again there. Then carbon. They showed us their clip technology last year at Rapid. They had announced it just a few weeks before. And they have now added a new machine and a new auxiliary piece of equipment, the M2, which has twice the surface area, XY, versus the predecessor, the M1. So bigger parts and some other nice bells and whistles. And a smart part washer, which knows the material that you build in, knows the geometry of the part, and it configures itself for the ideal optimal cycle to clean the parts and also recycle the resin. All this is tied together in a concept they're calling speed cell, where these two units talk to each other. You got a digital thread running through where you're for traceability, handshaking, and knowing what's going on between the two systems. Then we have a brand new one. This was about two months ago. I believe the company is pronounced Kubix. That's how I'm going with it. And they are, they are operating in a similar fashion to Carbon and to the figure four from 3D Systems I'll talk about in a second, but in reverse. Instead of bottom up, they're top down, but instead of using oxygen to inhibit curing, it's my interpretation is that they're starving the photopolymer of oxygen to accelerate curing. They're climbing up to 300 millimeters an hour, 
using different materials that can be processed because of the speed, like carbon and like uh, figure four from 3D systems. And they're also automating right out of the box with something called lift cell. Lift cell two, lift cell eight, lift cell 12, where you take their machines and pair those up with the central core, which has automatic part handling, pull parts off, those are storage racks to store up to, I think, 60 parts. It fills resin in the machine. And depending on the unit that you buy, you can also do clean in place in this robotic accessory that ties all the machines together. 3D Systems has a similar concept, going in a linear fashion instead of rotary fashion, of the last one. Figure four, we saw the demonstrator here at Ra uh, Rapid last year. Now we have a product that is being shipped. Figure four AM platform, DLP based, using inhibition of curing to accelerate the process for rapid builds that you can visibly see the parts extracted from the uh, resin. But it's automating the filling, it's automating the extraction of the part, it's automating the cleaning and curing right down the line. This is a configurable, expandable system that you can start off with one print engine and expand up to 16. In the world of FDM or FFF, fused filament fabrication or fused deposition modeling, we have developments here also. Stratus has recently announced the F123 series, material extrusion. This is all about the engineering work group. This is a work group solution, purpose built for that. So they're looking at reliability, ease of use, simplicity to let engineers, design engineers, industrial designers do their thing and just let the machine cruise in the background. Three machines in the lineup, the 170, 270, and 370. Only difference is you pick up a few inches in build area with, the, with a 370, and you pick up PC ABS, polycarbonate ABS blend on the 370. And the, uh, that and the others have PLA, ABS, and ASA. 3D platform came out with the Workbench Extreme. Here we pick up an extra half a meter. So instead of one meter by one meter of its, uh, of its predecessor, it's now one meter by one and a half meters. And using high flow extruders, 60 cubic inches an hour, which I think equates for an ABS to something in the neighborhood of two and a half, maybe three pounds per hour. Titan Robotics also has a new extruder. They're pushing or claiming about five pounds an hour, but what's interesting on this one is it's pellet fed. You don't have to buy filament. So if you've got access to an injection mold material supply chain, grab the pellets, drop it in. Those are processed in the extruder and extruded out. But really interesting is they're taking that ex new extruder head, taking five of those, up to five of those on a new platform they're calling Cronus, which is borrowing from Autodesk product Project Escher which allows those five heads to work in concert, synchronous. So they're able to work on multiple parts or all of them contribute to building a single part all for speed. And then a really recent announcement, partnership or venture agreement or working agreement between Ascentium out of Texas and BASF. BASF for materials, this is a material extrusion process. Ascentium is sheathing the filament with nanoparticle material carbon nanotubes, I believe that's the material that they're using, on the exterior. So now you're extruding the material, carbon nanotubes, and you're, you can perform an electrical welding process because the extruder head will conduct electricity into what you've deposited, creating localized heating of the carbon, which gives you better bond strength. Eight times the strength, I believe, is what they're, no, eight times the conductivity, because carbon also gives you RF kind of capabilities and uh, anything for electrical shielding kind of applications. Now, the big, big trend is metals. Still a small segment of our industry based on the number of users, the number of machines, but everybody wants in. As we already heard, our first one is Vader, the winner of the, of the paper contest. Magnetojet is what's under the hood. They're calling the process liquid metal printing, and they are using uh, wire, bringing that into the machine so it's a low-cost material source, fully melting that wire, think crucible, and then using an electromagnetic pulse to fire a single droplet of metal. With that process, it opens the door. What really excited me, it opens the door to materials that are previously unavailable to us in the additive manufacturing world. Two that really caught my attention were aluminum in the 6000 series, I think 6061, which isn't available, and in the 7000 series. They're also going after speed, claiming to be about twice the speed of the metal systems based on powder bed fusion. Adira is going after big stuff. Adira is a sheet metal stamping equipment manufacturer. Their process is called tiled additive manufacturing. The tiled portion is direct, uh, powder bed fusion, where they have one foot by one foot working areas, tiles, 
an array of three of those in X and three of those in Y, giving you the ability to make up upwards of three foot by three foot, but they're still individual. That brings in the second process, directed energy deposition, where those are then combined through a welding operation using directed energy deposition. That's got a working envelope of five foot by five foot by five foot. And we had Mark Forge in January. Material extrusion for metal parts. We've seen materials talked about for the open, platform, open platforms, but here they came out with a machine called the Mark X. So they are extruding thermoplastic that is heavily loaded with metal powder. That creates, like I mentioned for Admitech, that creates a green body that you then put through a debinding process to get rid of that thermoplastic. It's just a carrier, and then you go through a furnace, furnace cycle to consolidate and create your final part. Then heavily, uh, heavily anticipated, we saw a week and a half ago or a week ago the announcement from Desktop Metal of what they had up their sleeve, and here at Rapid, you will be the very first people to see their technologies. And I did say plural. It's not one, it's two. They've got the DM Studio, Desktop Metal Studio pictured above, and the Desktop Metal Production pictured below. Studios and extrusion process, similar to what Mark Forge is doing. I looked at that when I was introduced to it, and I said, eh, been there, done that. Then they have the production process, which is binder jetting. I looked at that when we first started talking, I thought, eh, been there, done that. What's really interesting, and you need to dig in the detail, is all their secret sauce. They've got a support release strategy where right out of the furnace, the supports just pull right off of the parts. They also have a brand new furnace pictured here that's microwave enhanced and office compatible. So programmable, programmable zones allows you to get the best properties that you're desiring out of your parts, but they're also making everything smart. Dealing with shrinkage in a centering or the furnace cycle is an art form when you're in metal injection molding and similar. They are baking in a lot of the intelligence programmatically. Support structure for parts is even designed, not just to support it during the build, but also to support it in the proper orientation for the furnace cycle. And there's much, much more detail to this. Uh, oh, and by the way, the production system is also attacking low-cost materials because they've got technology that allows them to use metal injection molding feedstock or powder, I should say, grab that at about a fifth or a sixth the cost of what we pay for powdered metals for the current technologies. More metals. Now, these are all what I call incremental. The, every one of these technologies is based on powder bed fusion, specifically laser melting. I use this to show that we are, we're making baby steps also along with the big new advancements, but we need those because that's what makes us mature and that's what allows the technology to truly do what we expect it to do in a reliable, consistent, fast, cost-effective process. The first one on, on the list, let me back up, is Farsoon, simply a larger machine with a hotter laser, 500-watt laser and about 11 inches by 11 inches by 13 inches. Not big news, a new platform for them. I use them as a harbinger of what's coming. Asia is coming to Europe. Asia is coming to North America with respect to metal machines in a big, big way. Farsoon is a Chinese company. Then we have SLM Solutions with version 2.0 of their existing SLM 280. Here what we're looking at, the primary uh, changes are uh, gas handling, but also their dual lasers, which they have available on the 280, are now hotter lasers, up to 700 watts, two 700 watt lasers. That's all about speed, that's all about throughput. Trump came to the United States for additive manufacturing last year with a machine called the True Print. 1,000, most recently they announced the TruePrint 3,000, only difference is three times the diameter for your build area, so 300 millimeters by 400. Add up, this is an interesting one, brand new company created by a joint effort of Thieves, a design and, and mechanical firm, and Michelin looking to make metal molds for making tires. They came together, came up with technology, came up with a company called Add Up. the first machine is called FormUp, Form up 350. What I really like about this is from day one, this was all about being a production grade machine. Measuring overall equipment effectiveness, looking at tracking and traceability and, and managing every step of the process, every step of the part, every step of the powder handling for 24 seven predictable operations. Finally, Sodic, a machine tool manufacturer doing, uh, making EDMs and, and similar equipment has a hybrid platform. This is the first hybrid I'll mention or we're doing powder bed fusion and combining uh, milling in the same platform. So add a little material, mill a little away, add a little, mill a little. And 
Uh, beyond that, so that's already been done. This is just a new player. This is representing that you have a lot of choice in the additive space these days. Oh, oh Sodic, that's what I was gonna mention. Sodic also, before I forget, recently announced a parallel processing mode. Even though you have a one kilowatt laser, a 700 milliwatt laser, a 500 milliwatt laser, you usually can't use all of that power. So what they're doing with parallel mode is taking advantage of not using all that power, allowing up to three concurrent spots, working at the same time, all using a single laser, a single scanning system, keeping the cost down. Still on metals, these are all directed energy deposition. BA, uh, beam machines out of France came to the United States. This is their recently announced machine. One of the things they're going after is smaller footprint. So they're bringing in all the peripheral equipment into that chassis of the machine for a smaller operating footprint, multi-axis, five-axis machining, inert environments, so you can, uh, work with reactive materials, two kilowatt laser, and on and on and on. But that's very similar to the other guys just another choice. Hybrid manufacturing technology, the contributor of our icons, has been offering a tool changing concept with additive manufacturing for a number of years. They most recently announced Ambit Series 7. So this allows you to upgrade a CNC machine or a CNC machine tool manufacturer to now get into the additive world on the same platform. With, sev with Series 7, he's added some new tools. Uh, you know, beyond you being able to do cutter changes, you've got the directed energy deposition head, you've got laser ablation, laser drilling, laser uh, finishing, and also an inspection tool using eddy currents for in-process inspection to detect voids and cracks during the builds. And then Optimec, who was a, the first company to commercialize the directed energy deposition technology, borrowing heavily from laser cladding, has been selling machines for since the mid-90s, has been selling uh, uh, they call it the print engine for ma CNC manufacturers to upgrade machines. Now they've got a uh, partnered effort to actually have a CNC machine with the, they call it lens, laser engineered net shaping technology buried in, multi-axis machining hybrid platform. Still not done with metals though. We also got smaller and low cost. Fraunhofer announced a $36,000 machine, low power, 140 watts, laser diode, small spot size, so it's for small parts, detailed parts. But what really excited me was the price point and that they're trying to drive out the thinking of making metal additive parts by making it easy to use and turning it into a programmatic approach where you have part, that's all you need to do, submit that, good part builds. Instac has a line of metal additive manufacturing machines. Most recently, they added a desktop. They're claiming the first desktop directed energy deposition technology, still with a sizable build envelope of 200 uh, 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters. Or laser, who you can see here with the Orlis Creator, $82,000 for a directed energy deposition platform. And I'll leave the details up to you to check that out to see what they're about. But they have improved powder handling for speed, small spot size, reasonable power laser. And finally, Aurora Labs, $40,000 price point for the S Titanium, and then also the S Titanium Pro. They are combining in this small unit powder bed fusion and directed energy deposition, they claim that by combining those two, that they can process more metals than any other additive manufacturing technology available. Claim. Don't know if that's true. Almost done with the hardware side of additive manufacturing. We'll go to bigger and faster. Oak Ridge National Labs, in partnership with Ingersoll Machine Tool, have announced WAM, Wide and High Additive Manufacturing, projected to be available in 2018. When they say wide and high, they mean 10 foot by 23 foot by 46 foot for your build volume. Depositing material extrusion, depositing upwards of 1,000 pounds of plastic an hour. Also outfitted, it's hybrid, outfitted with CNC machining. Not to be outdone, Thermwood, oldest uh, machine tool manufacturer in the United States, has LSAM large-scale additive manufacturing. Now, it pales in comparison to WAM because it's only five foot by 10 foot in width and height, where they really, and 150 pounds an hour, nothing to sneeze at, but certainly not 1,000. But their machine, based on their CNC routing platform, can be configured out to 110 foot long. So we can get big. 
And you can stop by 3D Hybrid Solutions here at the show. They just announced a very large format directed energy deposition metal machine in partnership with a company. Is it multi-ax or multi-ax? I don't know how to pronounce it. In partnership with a company, this thing has a build envelope of 500 cubic meters. That's 17,500 cubic feet of build area depositing metal at 20 pounds an hour and full multi-axis machining to trick the parts out before they ever come out of the machine. Now, I'm gonna shift gears, sticking with hardware, but let's go into briefly the 3D scanning side. I've gotta thank Michael Raphael of Direct, Dim Direct Dimensions for feeding me this information because there's so much on additive, I can't keep up with the scanning side also. What he selected, First one is a company called Artec, brand new handheld scanner called the Leo. Fast capture, full color capture. What caught my attention is Leo is fully, um, it's untethered, unwired, walk around, but on board it's got a nine degree of freedom inertial system, which allows it to know where it is in space without physical reference points like dots or any distinct geometry that it can triangulate off of. So fast, high speed, high data capture. HP acquired a company called David Scanner in 2016, and it now has a line of low-cost scanners based on structured light. So using a projector and then cameras uh, picking up the data uh, projected by the projector. Projected by the projector, that's really redundant. For a low-cost solution, they got two models, the S2 and the S3. Faro has had the Cobalt Scanner out for a number of years. That's what these are. One of them is a cobalt scanner. The new announcement is a cobalt array where they allow unlimited number of cobalt scanners to be um, arrayed. All of them are come together for onboard processing of the data. They're going after inline inspection kind of applications and manufacturing where you could have these stationed and you get full capture as a part passes by with onboard processing of that data. Laser design is going after fast and easy part inspection with the Cyber Gauge 360. No fixtures required, take your part, toss it in the machine, hit go. It will scan top, bottom, sides, full data capture, one operation, and then it automatically pumps that through to generate your inspection reports powered by software from Innovmetric called Polyworks. Shining 3D, which also has additive manufacturing plays, quite a few of them out of China, has a new version of their Einscan Pro scanner. This is the Pro Plus. This is about larger field of view, so able to capture patches as big as 20 inches by 32 inches at quite a distance, but at the same time be able to capture detail. So you get the best of both worlds there. But with, so bigger and then also faster. Instead of seven laser lines for scanning, they've gone to 100 lines for scanning to really ramp up the speed. This thing can be run in handheld mode. It can be put on a tripod. It can be put on a tripod and have a turntable for full automation. And then finally, Polyrix, two versions of their scanning solution, XS and XL. XL is pictured at the lower right. XL stands about nine foot tall to give you an idea of scale. This is for manufacturing inspection. Wheel part in, scan for a barcode, and the thing takes off on its program, capturing from all different sizes, from stationary cameras, outputting your inspection report. I'm very sorry that that's all the time I have for 3D scanning. Just wanted to give you a little taste. As with everything that I'm talking about, go to the show floor, investigate if you need a 3D scanning solution. So now I'm going to shift gears back to added manufacturing and back to materials. And materials are everything. Materials are what drives our applications. Materials are what make things possible. And materials are quite exciting. As Mickey mentioned in the, uh, the keynote presentation, meta materials are being researched and worked on. We have programmable materials. We have bulk metallic uh, glass. We have magnetic materials are being worked on. It's just an amazing field of research right now in materials that's gonna open the door to lots and lots of applications. The first three are what I feel are some trends that have emerged that are real today. Ceramics are a hot topic. So XJet launched its nanoparticle jetting technology here at Rapid last year. That was for metal parts. End of last year, they announced that they're also going to do ceramic parts. Again, this will be a green body that has to be debound, well, not debound in their case, but taken through a furnace cycle to get the final part. Other ceramics companies, Admitech, who I already mentioned, for the DLP technology, working with ceramics. And then even Roland, DGA, with its binder jetting technology, is doing uh, alumina, 
with binder jetting to come up with ceramic parts. And ladies and gentlemen, there are others. Silicone was a hot topic last year. Wacker Silicone came out with an additive manufacturing process based on photo curing. So we got photopolymer along with the silicon material, which is more of a, it is a thermoset. And they opened uh, the floodgates on silicone, a very desirable material because of its properties, temperature resistance and performance in all kinds of conditions, both for mechanical parts and also for human body kind of applications. Well, on the heels of Wacker, out came Stern with the SIO. Stern is a molder of silicone materials. They came up with the technology. Theirs is based on material extrusion plus a photopolymer to create silicon parts. And then along with that, a company out of Japan called Kionth. You can't buy the machine here in North America. Um, Germany and Japan is pretty much their markets. But they retrofitted their, not retrofitted, they adapted their current inkjet technology, jetting, uh, not inkjet, jetting technology to handle silicones. Also a uh, photo curable base to get the parts solidified. Composites, very hot topic in a lot of different fashions. So we have true composites and we have composite materials. Composite material, I already mentioned Mark Forge with the metal, the metal X early on for extrusion. It has been doing extrusion for a number of years of fibers, fiberglass, uh, carbon fiber, etc but it encases that, it lays down the carbon fiber or the fiber and then encases that in thermoplastic. So it's not a cloth kind of concept, it's individual strands that are encased to improve part strength. Their new machine, the Mark X, is um, bigger than the previous model, significantly bigger, running about, what was it, 10 by 14 inches in XY. It also has onboard laser inspection of the parts, so you keep monitoring, make sure good parts are coming out. Solid Fusion is a services company exhibiting here. They've got some new thermoplastics for their carbon filled parts, 30 to 40% carbon fiber filled. Um, they're pushing the envelope on the thermoplastics they have available. Uh, what do they have? Thermoplastic polyamide. They've got a liquid crystal polymer. They've got Ultem. They've got Peak uh, and a couple of other higher end materials available for making composite carbon fiber filled parts, I should say. Envision Tech announced a new technology called SLCOM last year. It's still in beta, but that is using true sheets uh, of cloth that are pre-impregnated with your thermoplastic of choice. And then Impossible Objects has been here for a number of years. Their approach is different than Envision Tech in that they're not pre-impregnating the sheet, they're bringing the sheet in and they're using jetting to lay down a wetting agent and then depositing your thermoplastic powder and then laminating, uh, the sh laminating the material and repeating the process. I bring them up because on the show floor you'll be able to see their pilot machine for the first time. So they're very near to production launch of their technology. You can buy parts already from them through the service bureau, th through the service operations, but soon you'll be able to buy the machine. Plastics and metals and all others, and by the way, before I dive into this, most of the companies I talked about in hardware also had many or some new materials that I just don't have the time to cover, only highlights, just giving you a taste of things. HP announced mater material development uh, kit, MDK, and an open materials application lab, and quite honestly, I read it and went, eh, not significant. For uh, good news for HP, I think, they flew me out last week. I was there and saw the whole open materials development lab. I understood the power of the MDK and I walked away extremely impressed. MDK is merely a first step to figure out if the powder you have in mind to work in their multi-jet fusion technology will even spread properly. If it won't spread, there's no reason to go forward. They then have a stage where they look at, does it fuse properly? Then a stage on, does it process in the machine properly? Then a stage on, does it recycle properly? All staffed by very bright minds. And uh, along with this, they are now shipping the multi-jet fusion machines. They started shipping those. Really a soft launch, I would call it. A limited, limited availability launch, as uh, they mentioned, so that any small issues that still reside don't get thrown out into the wild. Let's control those. So it is a technology that's available now. Other companies, Somos announced a month and a half ago, Taurus. This is a sterilithography of VAT photopolymerization resin for high temperature. Predecessors for high temperature sacrificed the mechanical properties because of the formulation. You typically had low impact strength 
and low elongation at breaks of the parts where, let's call them, on the brittle side. With Taurus, you're not sacrificing on those two characteristics, but picking up temperatures up to 93 degrees C, I believe, is the operating temperature for, temperature for the resin. Hoganus, proprietary metal technology based on uh, binder jetting called digital metal. Predominantly over the years have been processing stainless steel. They announced that uh, this month they're gonna start offering titanium parts off of the digital metal platform. Print CB, brand new company, brand new startup here at Rapid plus TCT 2017 to give each of you the first look at an electronics printing solution. Print CB, I believe this, I'm guessing the CB stands for copper based because that's what they're doing. Conductive inks that are copper based in a material extrusion process to do printed antennas, printed electronics. And I invite you, you know, small startup company, go out and support them. I invite you to stop by at least to see what they have available and what they're up to. Software, can't even begin to scratch the surface on this, but package it into three areas, design. We heard uh, generative design from uh, a keynote speaker. We heard um, generative design, we heard topology optimization. Those are all very popular concepts and we're getting the software now to serve that. Two that popped to mind, one is Frustrum, which is cloud-based topology optimization. So take the file, upload it, and out comes your optimized part, topology optimized. The other one that comes to mind is limit state, which is more of a generative process, because what they're going after, they believe that the topology optimized part that comes back as a mesh probably still needs some design work done on it, which you have to import and get into a CAD, ed, editable CAD state. For theirs, they, they keep it as editable CAD data from start to finish, and their goal is to accelerate the process. Simulation. Additive works is simulating metal additive manufacturing to predict stresses that will then cause the possibility of part warping. So you have a chance to counteract it before it ever comes out, gets into the machine or comes out of the machine. And then our good friends 3D Sim are doing the same thing. Both of these companies are in beta phase. 3D Sim does the stress uh, analysis, stress simulation for part distortion, but also takes the whole game even farther into predicting material properties and other characteristics of the part. You can use that for process development and also part development. And then I just got a big bucket for control. Autodesk has had some announcements recently with um, uh, their own topology optimized uh, optimization, no, not optimization, their own simulation solution for simulating processes to predict what's going to happen, a net shaping function that automatically adds machine stock to your 3D printed, your CAD file that's going to be 3D printed to allow you the room to machine to come into uh, net shape parts that you want. And they're also responsible for Project Escher, which drove that Cronus machine from Titan Robotics that I mentioned very early on in the presentation. Materialize. Two announcements, one last week, one today. Last week was regarding 3D, um, uh, the 3D print suite. So they're offering a new tool called Inspector, Materialized Inspector. This is about handling and processing all the data from in-build process monitoring where you're capturing, in this case, images of what's going on in each layer. So it's about grabbing all that data, processing it. I believe it's, what, 4,000 images in uh, a minute that they can process. So you're generating tons of data. You gotta be able to process it quickly. Also, uh, Magic's Print Metal, which is a file preparation and build processor for the metal additive machines. Now, it's some, not something that you would buy directly from Materialize to run whatever machine you want. Instead, it's a tool that the machine manufacturers can license from Materialize and then provide you as the interface and the control mechanisms to drive your processes. And then today's announcement was, VJ, please, I apologize, 3D Systems in the past has been a rather closed environment, materials and support and all that. The announcement from Materialize this morning was that 3D Systems has now opened its door at least to file processing. Materialize will be providing the build processor for the color jet printing process offered by 3D Systems. So picking up the, the skills, the awareness, the advancements, the optimization that Materialize offers for the color jet printing methodology, which by the way, if you don't recognize the terminology, that is a binder jetting uh, process. Then in control, we have SAP and Siemens. SAP is not here with a booth, Siemens is. This, I close out with these guys because big monster companies who have taken an interest 
and additive and big monster companies that are bringing IT solutions that we so desperately need to really set this technology free. SAP is coming at it from the business side, the logistics side, and they're looking at a scalable, seamless, distributed manufacturing tool that ties together all the touch points, hardware and materials and service providers and OEM. Siemens is coming at it from the technical side, as you probably are aware, maybe aware, they offer the CAD software called Siemens NX. So they're very much a robotics, soft, robotics control CAD kind of company, and that's their approach. And they're bringing to us a 3D print platform that's end-to-end, -end, topology optimization, through build management, through automation, through the entire process. And along the way, both companies, SAP and Siemens, are partnering like you would not believe. There's been so much news where these companies are partnering with the hardware manufacturers, to partner with other companies to bring us all together because we all, we can get farther if we don't work alone. The last thing with Siemens is partnerships on the software. Frustrum, who I mentioned for Siemens, uh, design uh, optimization, topology optimization, is now going to be a tool available within Siemens NX CAD software and materialize has also got components, a recent partnership that will be made available in uh, Siemens NX, so bringing things together. So with that, I got one minute. What good timing. I know it went fast. I know I touched on a lot of different points, but it's to give you a flavor of what's going on and just that taste to hopefully incite you to learn more about the tools that are available, but you must keep your eyes open. This is what's new. I know there's other things that will be announced tomorrow. I know there's other things that I'm suspecting there's other things that will be announced because people want control of the message instead of having some bozo like me stand up here and deliver their new product announcement. And there's dozens and dozens and dozens of things that I had no time to cover. So ladies and gentlemen, what's new? You will see it at Rapid. And I hope you enjoy your next three days on the show floor. Use them productively because there is a ton of stuff to see and a ton of stuff to learn. Thank you very much.